Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bayou Time. We have two more members of the CIS family with us, uh, two electrophysiologists. We have Dr. Richard Abbott and Dr. Kamwar Singh, both with us. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for let's, having us. Oh, uh, let's yeah. get to you first, Dr. Abin. What exactly is electrophysiologist? So an electrophysiologist is a cardiologist who has standard cardiology training, but he has extra training such that he has specialized expertise in treating electrical disturbances of the heart. So I like to think about the heart in terms of any kind of mechanical device. So you have a plumbing section, so that's got pumps and fuel lines and valves. And then you have an electrical section. And the battery of the heart controls the cadence of the heart. And then there's wires that permeate throughout the cardiac tissue where that impulse from the battery is uh, related through the wires. So when you have a disturbance of the battery or the wires, a short circuit, or a frayed wire, or a bad battery, that's where we come in. How much more specialized is it now than what it was when you first started? Uh, totally. Uh, that's a great question because I trained, you know, many years ago in the 80s. And you could pick up a lot of this stuff probably in six months. And now, you know, Dr. Singh, he had training in his cardiology fellowship, which was advanced in terms of what I saw in those days. And now you have an extra two years where it's really an intensive uh, perceptorship. We have a lot of cases and learn all this. So it's an extra two years plus... Uh, the kind of training you get in your regular cardiology uh, fellowship, too. If you will, uh, let, tell me what is or what are heart rhythm disorders? Okay, so those would be disorders of the heart that emanate from these, the battery or the wires. And it can run the gamut from very minor arrhythmias. Everybody has little palpitations and things that are kind of nuisance things to life-threatening events where your heart goes haywire and either pass out or even die. So it, it's a big, wide gamut in terms of uh, the severity and uh, symptomatology. What are symptoms of that? Okay, so some symptoms uh, related to cardiac arrhythmias, are, some patients are asymptomatic, and it's up to us when we detect those to see if they're dangerous. And then other patients will have symptoms. The most common would be palpitations, passing out or syncope, weakness, shortness of breath, chest pain. And some people just kind of don't feel right. They feel like tired, they don't have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. When their cadence of the heart is disrupted, atrial fibrillation is a real common cardiac rhythm disturbance where the top chamber is kind of vibrating versus beating in a nice organized fashion. And sometimes the patients don't really put their finger on what's wrong, they just kind of feel bad. So. Uh, it's up to us to kind of glean out exactly what's wrong and, and the kind of treatments that are appropriate. And sometimes I would guess, uh, having the experience that you all have in this, you can pick up on some things because generally when someone says, well, I'm just not feeling right, mm -hmm. and they know something is wrong with their body and then you have to go from there. That's right. You have to carefully kind of look at the, the first thing we look at is kind of the overall condition of the heart. And, you know, how's the heart pump, how the fuel lines, how this thing. And then we kind of delve into the electrical system and see if it needs treatment. And a lot of times, you know, we can improve it. Now, well, we'll get into treatment in a second, but there's a wide spectrum of treatments that are available, and that's the kind of thing that we need to address. Is there anything else as far as diagnosing the disorders? Well... Once you've kind of established the condition of the heart, there are monitors that you can place. Sometimes you wear it for 24 hours. A basic EKG is a, is a, you know, is a, a monitor that's done over a minute. And then expansion of that would be a 24-hour monitor where you record every heartbeat for 24 hours. And now we have these uh, monitors where actually you wear them for a month. And you can kind of, you know, sometimes cardiac arrhythmias are intermittent. Well, they'll say, yeah, I felt bad. I almost passed out a month ago, but I felt well since. We're thinking, well, gee, is that something dangerous or not? Why don't we put, in, put them on one of these monitors for 30 days? There's also some implantable monitors that are a little bitty. They look like little thumb drives, about half the size of a small thumb drive. And you put it under the skin and the chest. And those can stay in for like, you know, a couple of years, monitoring every heartbeat. And we monitor those at home over the telephone, 
And if there's some dangerous arrhythmias or important information, we can get that almost automatically, kind of online. Well, yeah. information so cool is incredible. Yeah. Dr. Singh, what are treatments for arrhythmia? Yeah. So, at, you know, the spectrum of arrhythmias varies from either just nuisance arrhythmias or dangerous that can make you pass out or to life-threatening that can be fatal. So treatment varies, you know, many times you just need to adjust your lifestyle. Um, and sometimes treatment of other cardiac problems, you know, the heart, the, if there is a blockage that needs to be fixed, that can take care of it. And many times, you know, if it is fairly life-threatening, you may need a surgical intervention like a device, implantable device, which can be a pacemaker or a defibrillator, um, or sometimes procedures like ablation procedures. Now, what exactly is a cardiac ablation? So cardiac ablation is a, is a procedure like a heart cath that you know, has been around for a long time to check for blockages. In terms of ablation, we check the electrical system of the heart, and we, we try to tease out you know, where these short circuits or slow conduction or fast heart rhythm is coming from. And uh, it's a day procedure. Most of the time, you know, the patient comes in the morning, goes home the same day. And sometimes, you know, if it is, depending on how long it does, it can be overnight. But basically, we go with a tiny catheter in the heart, we tease out the electrical conduction system, and the bad cells of the heart that cause this problem, we can take care of those by either delivering light amount of heat energy or cold energy. And once that bad cells are destroyed, the arrhythmia usually goes away. Now, what are the benefits of uh, cardiac ablation for patients with heart rhythm disorders? Yeah, so it, it, it varies as a spectrum, but most of the procedures that include ablations are much higher success rate than medications. And that has been shown in several of the trials over, you know, really several, like millions of patients all over the world. And uh, so ablation procedure, once patients have tried and failed medications, really come into picture and help improve the quality of life. Now, how are implantable devices used to treat arrhythmia? So implantable devices vary in the way they can either be used to speed up the slow heart rate when patients are passing out of the slow heartbeat, what we call is like a heart block. Um, or they can be used to prevent sudden death when patients are having really bad, fast rhythms which can make them pass out, and potentially if they don't get treatment, they die. So the devices vary from pacemaker that be speed up the heart rate, and then the defibrillators which shock the heart in case of that fatal rhythm to happen. And those things depend on what kind of rhythm problem patient has and what kind of heart problem otherwise patient has. Yes, sir. Uh, in terms of uh, treating cardiac rhythm disturbance, and Dr. Singh and I are on the same patients, and just for kind of the people at home, it's important to remember that some cardiac rhythm disturbances don't really require any treatment, and they really require just lifestyle adjustments. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, if you kind of examine the lifestyle and you get rid of the stress, uh, you're moderate with alcohol, exercise, you know, there's a condition called sleep apnea if you treat that, thyroid disorders. And then, of course, watch for the caffeine. Caffeine kind of gets a bad rap. Uh, in the past, it's been said that nobody can use caffeine at all. It really is very del deleterious to the heart. But actually, caffeine in moderate usage is okay. But what we like to do before we kind of jump into kind of ablation and medications and everything, we kind of address the underlying lifestyle issues. And there are studies that show that, in fact, for example, catheter ablation works better long term when effective lifestyle uh, adjustments have been made. They had a randomized trial in, in uh, Australia called the Legacy Trial. It's really quite a study. Patients, both groups had ablation, and the ones that had the effective kind of weight loss exercise, treat the sleep mm -hmm. apnea, they did much better in terms of the recurrence of the arrhythmia. So that's really important when you're treating patients. And stress too, you know, mm -hmm. stress kind of gets the adrenaline going and adrenaline stimulates the heart and that's what kind of the cardiac rhythm disturbances emanates from. So that's really important. Now it, it seems like, and of course lay people are not doctors, but lay people also are a lot more educated on any of this than no what question. they ever were. So, you know, if you feel like, you know, you have symptoms of arrhythmia, 
then right. you should see a electrophysiologist no and absolutely make absolutely. an appointment and get that looked at. Yeah, we're, uh, I mean, like I said, uh, patients, uh, sometimes patients will come in with seemingly minor things and they turn out to be major because it's life threatening. And some will come in and think it's really major and it actually turns out to be really quite minor and reassurance is all. So it's important to get it checked out either way. It's very hard to detect just for a patient to know which end of that spectrum he's in. So getting checked out is certainly an important uh, fact. I just, I just want to make one more comment just about our program here in HOMA. So uh, we've had cardiac electrophysiology here for, you know, 25, 30 years, and really probably one of the busiest programs in the state and the region. But, you know, lately we've decided that we wanted to expand our service, and that's how we got Dr. Singian, and we're very excited to have him here. He adds kind of a specialized aspect to our practice. And uh, Terrebonne Parish was, um, Terrebonne General is very uh, helpful in kind of getting us this mm -hmm. advanced equipment. And now what we have, we kind of work as a team. You have kind of a young, hungry guy with cutting edge treatment, and then you have kind of a seasoned guy like me who maybe has a different perspective. And we often see the patients together. We actually often agree on things too, but uh, it's really a nice kind of one-two punch for arrhythmia treatment in this region, and we're excited about it. And I like how you said that, young and seasoned. I, yeah. I like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. It really yeah, sounds good. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> Dr. Kamwar Singh, Dr. Richard Abbott, thank you all okay, so much thanks. for joining thank us. Thank you for really having appreciate it. It. Okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we are going to have TGMC to your health right after this. Stay with us for more Bayou Time. <laughs> 